Man, you're good with computers. Do you do this for work? I touched a couple Macs in my life. <laughs> a couple computers, maybe. So who here is um, starting out in cybersecurity? Raise your hand, I wanna see. Okay, awesome, cool, all right. Well, I'm, I'm going to, um, I purposely made my talk so it wouldn't go too long because what I'd like to do is after I, I give my presentation, we'll have some Q&A time and I can help you with figuring out um, what uh, branch of cybersecurity might be good for you. Um, but this is recorded, so if you would rather do this more one-on-one, -on -one, um, I will be after my Linux talk, which ends at three. I w at three o'clock, I'll be wherever my Linux talk is. <laughs> so you can meet up with me there as well, and we can talk about it too. Um, my notes aren't actually super. Oh, there it is. It's on two things now. Yes. So now let's try rewriting and see if it gets the thing. Oh, it does, sort of. Let me see. I think at this point I just have to show my notes. There we go. Okay. My notes aren't very long. It's just I forget things. Okay. So um, my talk is starting a career in cybersecurity. Which path should you pursue? So. This is something that um, a lot of people struggle with because there are so many different branches to go into. How do you know what to go into? Um, there's a lot of information um, on Red Team. You can find a lot of information on um, Red Team, but Blue Team is so broad that there really is not like a Blue Team, you know, way to go. Um, so hopefully I can help you with this. Um, let me tell you about myself. So this is the only picture I had with me with my speaker badge from last time I was at B-Side San Antonio. So I know it's a weird picture, but um, that's what we're getting. So I actually, as you can see, um, I did a lot with my career in eight years. Um, I started studying cybersecurity in 2011. Um, I definitely did a little bit of job hopping, but we'll talk about that and the reason why. There is a reason. Um, yeah, let's see. So that's five different jobs. Um, so I started in 2011. Um, I had kind of been into phone freaking, if you all are familiar with that, um, since about 2002 or so. So um, was that my Mac? Uh oh. All right. We'll find out if that's a problem later. Um, <laughs> so, um, I had known about 2600, um, but I never actually went because honestly, I was scared to go. Um, finally, in 2011, uh, you know, enough people harassed me about going. I was like, all right, fine, I'll go to 2600. Um, and yeah, it, it was exactly as I expected, like all dudes drinking beer. And I was like, ooh, I don't know if I fit in here. And um, there's actually a speaker here today that I can credit for, for me actually being in cybersecurity. His name is Tim Shelton. He's the first person that walked up to me and said, hey, come join us. You know, it's let me introduce you to everyone. He introduced me to everybody. He set me up with an account on um, on a uh, Linux server he had. I mean, right then and there, I had, you know, access to the same um, the same uh, IRC server as everyone else there. So I think that's really important. Is you know, understanding that people people. Um, even if you're new to cybersecurity, there's always going to be someone newer. So no matter what, you know, bring people in and, and give them resources and help them out because um, they're they're probably thinking they're probably just as nervous as you were when when you first walked up to a, a group for the first time or first went to a conference. Um, so yeah, I started with tech support and self-studying. Um, 
And tech support is really good to start out with because you learn all about um, the troubleshooting process, which I think is very important in tech. Um, you also learn about metrics and how to play the metrics. That can be important as well. So I was one of the top um, tech support agents consistently. Um, so I started self-studying cybersecurity in Linux. Ah, well, I guess I'm done. No. Um, I don't know why that's two bullet points, I'm sorry, but I was self-studying cybersecurity in Linux. Um, then I got a job as a network security analyst, which is a level one type position where you're basically watching alerts. So I was watching alerts on the network and um, sending emails to the, the client if, you know, if something looked weird. Um, then I started a hacker space and I, that's when I started public speaking. Um, I think this was pretty important, the public speaking aspect. I'm not really a public speaker, believe it or not. Um, I mean, technically I am now, but it's not something I sought out to do, but sharing information and public speaking and volunteering at conferences really put me in, into, um, into the same room as a lot of people that, that I'm sure led to many opportunities for me. Um, so then I became a security engineer, infrastructure, focused on infrastructure, uh, for a large um, cloud provider. <coughs> and this was great because I could do some hands-on work. Um, I really suggest if you see an opportunity where you can do a lot of hands-on work, that's the best teacher. That, that that taught me more than any books that I ever picked up. Um, this is where I really fell in love with Blue Team. So at this point, I didn't know if I was going to do Red Team or Blue Team. I had no idea. Um, so at this point, um, I learned that I really love infrastructure. I love Linux. And um, I... I just love uh, configuring and tuning and all that sort of, you know, stuff. Um, and so that that was a good opportunity for me. And from that, I went into vulnerability management for the same company. The same thing happened. I was like, wow, I'm actually kind of good at this. Um, and the funny thing is the reason I... <laughs> The reason they put me in vulnerability management is they said um, it had nothing to do with technical skills. It was that, oh, you'll be really good with getting people to fix things. And you can take a few guesses as to why they thought I would be good with people. But um, I, I ended up enjoying the technical aspects of it. And so I went into that. Um, then I did a little bit of, um, I had two other jobs, um, which were both engineering. And now I do vulnerability management and other things at Hurricane Labs, which is a managed service provider. We, that they, we mostly do like managed services for Splunk, but we also have managed services for um, uh, vulnerability management. And we do some pen testing and other stuff. Um, and the other things, the reason I say that is because they are always giving me an opportunity to do other things. So they'll be like, hey, we're working on this. Can you help us with it? And I'll be like, oh, yeah, sure. So that's my background. Um, I, I'll explain later why I moved around because that's actually very important. Um, so you might, um, you might be wondering... Okay, well, that's great. Thanks for sharing your career. What am I going to do? Okay, well, you have red team, you have blue team, and you have purple team. I'm sure everyone here has probably heard of that so far. Um, red team is offense, blue team is defense, and purple team is a combination of both or it involves the teams, the red and blue teams, working together. So you're going to find this term purple team um, spoken about a variety of different uh, roles, and 
I haven't heard any crazy debates about it, but I am guessing people have been debating and arguing about what is Purple Team, just knowing InfoSec. Um, so I'm sure you can get into some crazy, uh, crazy debates about that if you want. Um, so at this point, um, if you're not sure where to go, what I suggest is read as many books and blogs as you can on the topic. Um, if you're not much of a reader, like I can't really focus with reading as easily. I'm, I'm more of a talk kind of person. I learn from talks. Um, so I'd suggest going on YouTube and looking up, uh, DEF CON talks, of course, B-Sides talks. Um, try to get like a variety because, because I'll tell you, when I started out, um, I didn't understand half the words that they were saying. I didn't. And I would look at talks, titles, I would look at the titles and be like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to like this. And yeah, maybe I didn't understand half of it, but that gave me a jumping point to say, um, okay, well, there's this one little piece out of this 40 minutes that I watched that I found fascinating, so I'm going to go study that. Um, and, you know, you might see talks that you really aren't interested in, but then that tells you, okay, I am not going to go into that part of InfoSec. I'm going to stay away from it. So... Find out, you know, what interests you from watching talks, reading books, but also talk to people about their jobs. Um, this gave me a really good idea of what I should expect from, um, from job interviews, from employers, um, because I would hear stories about people at work and they're working in the field. And so then I would kind of understand, you know, this is you know, expected, and this is not expected, or, you know, it'd be really cool if I could get this benefit, I'm going to ask about that, because that guy got a really cool training budget, and that sounds awesome. Um, there's things that I didn't know were available. I didn't know people got paid to go to conferences. I had no idea. There are companies that will pay you to speak at conferences. So, talk to people about their jobs, and kind of get to know, um, get to know what is, I guess, standard or what's really cool that you might want to look for. Now, now we're going to get into red team and blue team. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with red team because it's a very hot topic at conferences. Um, you might like red team if you're strategic, like you enjoy um, breaking the rules and getting away with it and finding new ways to break the rules. That's always fun, because the first way doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to get a little creative. Um, you're decent at communication. Now, this is pretty important, because you could go, um, you, could, you could have a pen testing engagement, um, or a contract, or whatever you call it, and you can pen test all the things, and you can break into everything. But if you can't write a good report, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Um, you need to be able to write detailed reports, take notes as you go along. And I would suggest doing this while you're practicing as well. Even though you're not going to be writing a pen test report and turning it in, if you're studying red team stuff and you're doing, you know, an exercise like with, um, I don't know, like with hack the box or something like that, um, write through all of your steps. And so that way you get kind of used to documenting. So um, that's a skill that a lot of people have to learn. That's not really like a natural thing usually. So start practicing. Um, if you're curious, I would say curiosity in general is good um, for either blue or red. But if you like to know about all the different um, tools, techniques, and attacks, and different ways of um, of breaking into stuff. This would be great for you. You'll never be bored. Um, and also, this is, um, I would say, knowing scripting and or programming um, is more important on red team than blue team. 
blue team, you can get away with it. Um, I don't, I don't code. I barely code. If you look at my GitHub, you'll understand I barely code. Um, if I was in red team, I might have to write, you know, scripts or I might have to do things that, um, would make pen testing, um, easier for me. Um, and I would have to learn how to automate certain tasks and do certain things quicker because, you know, you, you're on a timeline. Um, so that's what I would, that's what I would recommend, um, thinking about if you're going to be on, on red team. Um, definitely try to pick up something like Python or, um, or, um, even like a web application language like JavaScript, that would be, that would be fine as well. Now, blue team, this is my team. I'm on the blue team. Um, you might like blue team if you like to learn about security infrastructure and how to configure and optimize. So if you love getting into servers and making them work at, at their best, um, I suggest security infrastructure for you. And if you like uh, setting things up, installing things, um, find some tutorials. Like, find out how to set up, um, you know, something like MySQL. And then move on to, like, finding out how to set up something like Snort. And um, just look for these tutorials that give you step-by-step -step guides. And... Um, learn how to set up and then go in there and see what you can do to configure and optimize it. Um, if you enjoy planning for a variety of scenarios, that's, that's a great blue team quality to have. So I personally am a planner. I plan everything. Um, and that doesn't mean that I'm always on time. Um, I did make it here right on time, but, <laughs> but I love planning. So for me, planning for certain attacks or certain events to happen, because it's not all about attacks and security infrastructure. One of the, um, um, I forgot the word for it. Uh, in Security Plus, you'll learn confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And availability means that the information is available. It's online. It's there. Um, if it's not available, doesn't matter how secure it is. Nobody can use it. So, if you enjoy planning for a variety of different um, circumstances, Blue Team would be great for you. Um, and have an interest in building systems and networks. I love building. I love building stuff. So, if you're into that, that's good as well. If you like analyzing techniques and tools used by attackers in order to prevent and or detect malicious activity. So, that's kind of the flip side of uh, Red Team. You're doing the exact opposite. You're learning about what they're doing to try to get in and how to prevent it. So you're learning like how to write rules, how to tune, how to detect, stuff like that. That's always fun for me. <laughs> and I think it kind of has to do with the fact that I started out as a network security analyst, but I love network security. So, what are some things that you can do? So, if you like Red Team, there's exploit writing, which I'm actually not too familiar with, um, but I, I know that it has to be essential for uh, Red Team. Um, network pen testing, and there's also social engineering and physical pen testing. This is a skill that people have that they don't really realize. So, um, if you've ever tried to get into something that you weren't supposed to be in, that's, that's either, and it could be both, social engineering or physical pen testing. Like when I was a kid, I loved exploring and sometimes breaking into things. <laughs> so I remember, uh, when, when I was, 
ages 10 to 13, we moved overseas. We moved to Indonesia. And we got to stay for the first few months in this huge hotel. And it had two towers. And we lived, like, at the top. It had, like, a nice apartment up there. And they had, like, several buildings scattered throughout the area. And I would just look. I would go into every building that was unlocked. And I found all sorts of stuff. And it was cool. And then I would get on the roof. And uh, one time my mom caught me on the roof. And she was like, don't you ever do that again. So a few days later, I did it again. And it was funny because I, I got up on the roof and I looked down and there was my mom right below me. And so I like ducked down and uh, she never caught me and she still doesn't know unless she views this video. Um, but stuff like that, if you love doing that as a kid, you'd be great at physical pen testing. Um, and there's also OSINT, Open Source Intelligence. So for the ladies in the room and non-binary people, um, this is probably something we're really good at because I know, at least for me, I have to find out everything about my date before I go out with him. I have all the information. I know everything. Um, my boyfriend is here. I knew his entire career before he even said it to me. But um, I pretended like I didn't know. I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, so <laughs> that's a skill that I know a lot of us have just for safety reasons, right? Um, then we have blue team. I talked a lot about blue team because I love blue team. Um, infrastructure, like I was saying, uh, building systems, protecting systems, there's incident response, so if you're one of those people that likes planning and likes carrying out plans, um, incident response is great. As soon as a breach happens or as soon as something, a big event happens, it's your responsibility, or even small events, it's your responsibility. It becomes your responsibility to uh, handle the whole situation. So that can be really fun. Um, there's malware analysis, um, compliance. And when I do vulnerability management, I scan things and I tell people to fix them. So um, that's, some, that's something that um, if you're really interested in vulnerability management, I can talk to you at length about that. <laughs> so there's other things you can do too. So InfoSec is not all about being super, super technical or super in the weeds. There's a lot of... Um, other jobs that really require security. Uh, journalism being one of them. There's, there's a good market in um, having security knowledge as a journalist. There's a lot of issues around privacy and around uh, new technology. Um, something that I think about a lot is how new technology affects us. Um, and the things, the unforeseen things that we, we didn't understand at the time, you know, like your, like these privacy issues that come up with uh, the Internet of Things um, devices that we have. Um, that would be a really good um, thing to be um, knowledgeable about in journalism. Um, you know, when they, they started uh, putting electricity in homes, they didn't even know that they had to insulate the wires. So things were catching fire, you know. So technology has always been really important to you know report on and um, and uh, investigate and figure out. Even new technology is not perfect, um, or especially new technology. Uh, digital forensics. This is a really fun one. Um, this is where they give you a computer. And they say, find the evidence or find the clues or find out, you know, um, we're, we're looking to see, we're looking to get as much information as we can out of this computer. When you delete something, it isn't necessarily deleted. So uh, digital forensics um, is fun to go into if you like those detective shows <laughs> where you have to find out who did it. Um, a developer of security software or a developer with a focus on secure coding, this is really important. Um, a lot of the vulnerabilities in web applications are really, really old. The new ones, they don't really get you. 
as much as the really old ones. Because the new ones, you know, the attackers are also getting to know the new vulnerabilities. But the older vulnerabilities, like SQL injection or SQL injection, um, that's one that's been around for a while. There's a lot of info on that one. So anybody could, uh, almost anybody could do it. So having a focus on secure coding is pretty important. Um, open source contributions. Um, if you're really interested in open source, there's a lot on <laughs> GitHub that, that you can contribute to. Um, and I would suggest Hacktoberfest, which is every October on GitHub. Uh, they have this, this thing where you do five uh, pull requests and um, you get a t-shirt. Uh, but the cool thing is everybody is on alert that, hey, during October, there's going to be a bunch of new people doing PRs, so it's a lot easier to search and find them. Uh, security awareness training. This can be pretty fun. This is one where you have to like public speaking, though. Um, so I'm not sure I could do it. I love being here and speaking, but you would be speaking a lot. <laughs> and then there's cybersecurity law, which... Um, if you're if you're into law, um, that would be a great field to get into as well because there's not a whole lot of cybersecurity lawyers. That's a specialization. Um, there's even cybersecurity insurance, which some people, you know, I, I didn't put it on the slide because I'm not really sure about cybersecurity insurance, to be honest. So, um, so this is where I'm going to go into why I changed jobs so much. Um, so I already talked about share your experiences as you learn. Oh, I didn't talk about that. Okay. So I was saying if you're doing red team work, you can start documenting. Um, but even if you're doing blue team work, you can document and share um, your knowledge. And what's great about this, um, the talk I actually did in San Antonio was about how to set up um, uh, uh, the MHN, which is a honeypot um, network type thing. And uh, I'll be honest, when I submitted that uh, talk, I knew nothing about it. So the person I was co-presenting with was, you know, helped me a lot on learning that. Um, and so then I wrote a blog post about it because I knew about it at that point, and so um, I, you know what, actually, it was the DFW uh, B-sides that I did first, so I didn't know anything about it then, but I did know when I came to San Antonio to do it. Minor correction there. Um, anyway, I, I wrote a blog post on it, and it's one of my most viewed blog posts on Medium. Because people are always looking for information. And I get DMs about honeypots, you know, on Twitter. So I have, I have become the expert, even though it's not really totally my thing. Um, in a way, I have become an expert on the topic. So as you're learning, share your knowledge, you become the expert. Ask for help because everyone started where you did and most people want to help. Um, the way I feel about it is if somebody thinks that I asked a stupid question, I'm just never going to ask them a question again. Like that tells me more about them than it does reflect. It doesn't reflect on me as much as it does on them. So don't be afraid to ask questions. If they treat you like you don't know anything, don't ever talk to them again. <laughs> You're saving yourself a lot of energy. Um, don't let your career get stagnant and seek opportunities that provide support to help you grow. So this is why I changed jobs so much. Um, in two of the cases, it was clear discrimination. Um, in one of the cases, my manager was just weird. <laughs> he was just weird. He, um, he was talking about my project behind my back and telling me that, telling other people that it was terrible. And then people would come to me and be like, but you're doing a great job. I don't know why he's saying that. And I'm like, he's saying what? <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, if you notice that you're not getting opportunities, it's okay to job hop. 
it's absolutely okay. Because the first time I did it, I went from making $30,000 to $65,000. That's one job change. And the reason is because they didn't give me a raise and they gave all the guys raises, which I found out by accident. My They, they were talking about their raises. I was like, what raises? Oh, you didn't get one? No. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, if the thing is, we we underrepresented folks get stuck in this trap of like always trying to prove ourselves like we just have to be perfect and we just have to try hard and, and maybe they'll see maybe they'll see that we know what we're doing if you know what you're doing somebody else is going to pay you more so stop proving yourself and um and, and i'm not saying fail at your job definitely don't fail at your job until you have another job <laughs> But what I'm saying is your energy can go towards finding other opportunities. Um, because there are places that will give you training and they will, you know, and that's a good question asked during an interview. What is my training budget? What types of things will you send me to training for? Because if they say Microsoft Word, I'm not going to work there. If they think I need Microsoft Word training, like one of the places I worked at, yeah. I'm not going to work there. I, I'm a security engineer, <laughs> not an administrative assistant. And that's, that's fine if you are, but that's not me. Um, also, become a part of the community if you feel comfortable doing so, because this is not something that's comfortable for everyone. Um, but there are online communities as well. So become part of the community. For me, that was volunteering and starting a hackerspace. Um, I do recommend volunteering. I do not recommend starting a nonprofit. <laughs> it's a lot. And um, I am not with them anymore. Um, so kind of trust your gut judgment. If you see some toxic activity, um, don't feel obligated. You're not obligated to stay and volunteer and help. Um, it's it's really important to preserve your health and your sanity first before bending over backwards to help people that are going to be ungrateful. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but yeah, the, the opportunities that really matter are the ones that provide sponsorship and training. And by sponsorship, what I mean is for example, my company sponsored me to come to this conference. They paid for me to come here. And those are the opportunities that really help you grow because if you don't have the financial income when you're starting out to go to DEF CON or to go to some big conference that's going to help you, the company helping you out is huge. It means that they, first of all, they value you as an employee. They value um, keeping you. And it also means that they are willing to put their money into, um, career development for you, which a lot of companies are scared to do because they think I'll put money in them and they'll leave. But honestly, like, I'm not just saying that because they paid for me to be here, but I don't want to leave my company because, you know, they're sponsoring me on all these cool things that I want to do. So look for those things. Um, the thing about community work, though, a lot of underrepresented folks um, are in community work. And what I find odd is that underrepresented folks become qualified to lead conferences, but not to lead teams at work. So there's a little bit, you know, there's a little bit of a... Uh, I don't know what the word is, but it's kind of odd. We see underrepresented people leading at conferences, but, you know, f they find it hard to get promotions. So that's something to consider if, if you hire people. Um, if they're leading conferences, they can lead teams. Conferences are very hard to pull off. Um, so 
here are some resources. Um, there's things. There's this thing called um, Awesome Lists. If you look on GitHub and you just type like um, Awesome Python or Awesome, you know, whatever topic, people make these entire lists of resources. So look for like Awesome Red Team, Awesome Blue Team. And get a bunch of um, resources that way. Um, Cybrary is a great, um, great um, tool as well. It's a um, uh, one of those course uh, websites. They offer courses for free. Um, OWASP is a great resource as well because they have on their um, wiki an entire section about attacks and types of attacks. So you can learn a lot just from looking through um, the different um, uh, types of attacks and, and learning about them. And Humble Bundles are great. You get, for $15, you get like 20 PDFs of books, like ebooks that are really nice books. Um, I have an entire library on my computer of Humble Bundles. Um, so, um, that was it. I hope that was really helpful. Um, and I think we have 15 minutes. Uh, what, what time do I, does it end? 15 minutes? Okay, so if you all have any, um, questions, we'll do questions first and thoughts maybe later if we have time. <laughs> or you can actually, um, did I not put my handle on here? So weird. Okay. Well, I will put it on here right now. Let's edit this live. We're doing it live. All right. So you can DM me or we're going to go off the slide here a little, I think. Always happy to help folks um, uh, with questions, career questions. Let's see if I can fix this. Oh, there we go. That's so perfect. I'm so good at this. <laughs> I'm kidding because um, marketing makes the slides and they make them look awesome and I just provide the words. So these awesome slides are not all me. Um, anyway, um, there you go. Um, does anyone have any questions? So I have a quick question for you. Okay. Performance, awesome presentation. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, you mentioned you move jobs frequently. Are there any tips you give folks in the room here about what you found in those interviews, particularly as you moved and developed your cybersecurity career? Those interview techniques that have helped you get those next positions. Oh, that's a good question. So one of the biggest things is finding out how their culture is. They, they use this word culture fit to describe anybody that they, they don't want working there, but they don't want to admit that they just don't want you working there. So they say, um, you don't fit. You're not a culture fit. What that really means is we don't have a good reason to deny you. Um, so something you can ask, something um, that I love asking is, do you have culture fit here? What what does your culture look like? And if they describe something very specific, it's like, okay, I may not may not want to take this opportunity. Um, and also ask about training. Um, ask about um, if you if you get an opportunity to talk to other people that are working there, that's huge. Like using Twitter to to DM people and say, hey, I noticed you worked at such and such company. I'm thinking of working there. Um, what do you think? And of course, people are going to say, oh, yeah, it's great. But you'll be surprised the little nuggets of information you get where you're like, ooh, maybe I don't want to work there. <laughs> Um, and another thing you can do is go to these conferences and these meetings as much as you can if you can handle um, social situations. As an introvert, 
sometimes I have to just leave. That's understandable. <laughs> but um, just talk to people. Like I was saying, talk to people about their jobs and learn about their jobs. That gives you a little insight as well. And it also gives you someone to go to if um, if that company is hiring. So you can say, hey, I really um, learned a lot about such and such company and you work there, you know, um, do you think I should apply? See what they say. Um, sometimes they even need to get your application past HR, which, which is an important step. Um, there, there are times when I've had to pull people's resumes and hand them to my manager, you know, because it would not have passed the HR check. So, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, did you have a question? Oh, okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Oh, okay. No, I'm done. Um, so, so thanks for sharing. Um, mm -hmm. And this is not an interview question, but I'm kind of interested. So where do you want to be in the next five years? So really, where, what's your, your career progression? Um, I really like where I am right now because I get all these opportunities. And... Um, you know, because I do have an illness that at times leaves me bed bound. Um, and they're very understanding about that. Um, I can work from home. I mean, I'm really happy where I am. Um, if something happens to this job or if they wake up one day and decide to fire me, which I hope doesn't happen, that would be weird. Um, I, I really see myself going into, um, um, like consultant work or like working for myself really um, because I can't really work in an office with my condition um, and I think that's kind of a natural progression um, after you've been in the in the business for a certain I mean I'm going on almost 10 years now um, at some point you just need to work for yourself or deal with you know working for someone else. <laughs> I don't suggest doing it early in your career, but later on, if you can work for yourself, you know, then you get to set the rules. It's a lot easier if you have the privilege to do that. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of qualifications did you feel you had to get the jobs that you did? Did you have certifications or school work or did your job history really help you make decisions? So this is a really good question because honestly, it varies for people and I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything and 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 um i'll tell you there's discrimination in this field so if you're a person of color or if you're you know a woman or if you're non-binary um i really suggest certifications like certifications are great um and i know a lot of women of color that have like master's degrees in cybersecurity. i didn't have to do that you know, I'm light skinned. <laughs> um, and I didn't know that that was like super important for people of color. I had no idea. But, um, getting a master's degree, it's, it's, that's like extremely, like, you're really devoted to it. So, um, if you, if you have a lot of passion for the field and you're really, really interested, you know, try to go for that master's degree because it will help open doors for you. Um, but for me personally, um, I knew a lot of people and I was kind of networking a lot. And so my first cybersecurity job that I got, I, I took the quiz and they actually accused me of cheating because I got them all correct. <laughs> but but they said okay you have the job but you just need to get a security plus within six months so those are those are good opportunities if you can find them um and and you can even if if you feel like the the interview is not going too well you know that's something that you can throw out there and say um i'll get this certification within six months i just need you know a little bit of support with it you know something something like that and then you'll find out like are they going to pay for my certification how much are how interested are they in having me here um so does that help <laughs>
Yeah. What what are you uh, what are you looking to get into? Um, I'm a recent cybersecurity graduate and I'm not really sure where that qualifies me to work. See, that's that's another thing is like you can be a graduate and you've gone through all the academic process but you don't know where to start. Right? So, um I think you're I think starting with the um going to conferences that's a great first step. Um I would suggest looking up like do you know like blue or red or you're still kind of blue? Okay. So, what you might want to do is look for um like a larger company that has that has a bunch of either support type roles or like level one um, security analyst because what's going to happen is you're going to get into that role and that's not where you're going to stay. So there's going to be other opportunities that come up and with a larger company you have more opportunity. So if if you're um, if you're if you have a degree and you have that on your resume that looks really good at larger companies, you, you might be able to to do that, find like a level one or a support and then work your way up and you'll you'll probably work your way up pretty quickly. So you feel I'm very serious. So you said people of color have to do more to attain basically where you're at. I've that's been my observation. I I don't know because I'm half white, so people just assume I'm white. Um, I I couldn't really say. Um, but if if you talk to other people of color, um, I'm sure they have way more details because um, it it really didn't occur to me, but. When I started to get on Twitter and I started to see the people that people that were saying, I'm just looking for an entry level job and I click on their bio and it says they have a master's degree in cybersecurity. After a while, you kind of see the similarities. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, these are all women of color. Like that was that was a wake up call for me. Like I had it so easy. Like I basically walked into this place and was like, I don't have a cert, but I'm going to get one in three months. And they were like, cool. <laughs> so I think, um, I think there's, there's, um, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, people of color in cybersecurity that probably have a lot of resources for you. Um, um, I just got here, so I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, if, if anyone, does anybody have any suggestions for him of someone that's here, a person of color that can, well, so I think, uh, I think, you know, I know you know, well, you know me, <laughs> well, I do have a master's. And I, I did have to have multiple certs to get an entry level job. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm a veteran. Yeah. So I was going to say the, the military, probably, NSA, I would probably talk to them too. Um, I think that's probably a good place, even starting out. Even for the folks that just graduated, I think that's probably a good place for them to start out. Okay. But I was going to ask you what. Oh, was. oh, I'm sorry. I just want to say real quick um, for the recording what he said was uh, look into NSA, government, and military. You know, there's probably other corporate entities too. But okay. I just think that if he was in here, I think NSA is here. So that's oh, the NSA is here. Okay. Hopefully they're not here for me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. Okay, so. so I was gonna ask, uh, so what other certifications do you recommend for uh, besides the security plus? So it kind of depends where you're going. So for red team, so I'll, I can sum it up by saying the quizzes that are multiple choice, they're the easiest to get, right? But the ones that you want to go towards are the ones like um, the what is it called for red team? OSCP. Yeah, OSCP um, and the Red Hat cert, I think, is also um, 
more interactive. Um, those certs look a lot better on your resume. Um, and also, um, I'm just going to suggest if you're in blue team, I'm going to suggest Linux certs because I love Linux, but also a lot of companies in cybersecurity use Linux. So that's really important to be able to, 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 um, to know and to understand. Okay, so I hope I didn't make a whole lot of people uncomfortable with, <laughs> with my talk about discrimination. It's not something that people like to talk about, but it happens. Truth. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I I just don't want anyone to be misled because honestly, when I started, like I was like, oh, um, as long as you get certs and you know you network with people, you'll get a job. And yeah, that's not true. So so do look for those opportunities. Because uh, they're out there, and there are people that will respect you. So, so um, are there? I can maybe take one more quick question. It seems like security clearances are a big deal on uh, job postings. What's the best way to fast track that process? So I don't know about that because um, I'm in Dallas. Um, I know in San Antonio it's a big deal. In Virginia. Um, Maybe you do you do you know you were talking yeah, about it? I mean, I, I don't know that you can fast track it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no way. You have those positions, and that's a requirement, so they're going to go through that background check for you. Um, or if you're a contractor that's supporting the government, they're going to probably do it for you. So okay. you really have to find the job and and hopefully keep your record clean. That's what I would tell you. So, okay. okay, so you need to find the opportunity that's going to basically go through the process, right? Um, what were you saying? Internships that um, like NSA has an internship if you go over there. Um, oh. So the internship they actually are recruiting now. Well, in August, September, and October for next summer. So that way you get your clearance. Oh, and good. Attend over the summer. So that's not the only program that does it, but a lot of them that's what they do. Okay. That's a very good tip. Thank you. So she's saying that uh, NSA is here recruiting actually for next summer. So you have plenty of time to get your clearance if you look for opportunities in the future. Um, and they do advertise those. So. Roxy, thank you. We're You're welcome. If there are additional questions, you may take on slide. The good news is the cafeteria is open for lunch. So yeah. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.